Welcome, Star Wars fans, to Episode 9 of Tatooine Sons. This week, we're digging into the additional scenes being included in the novelization of The Last Jedi being released on March 6th. The Star Wars show reveals a deleted scene that will be included in the Blu-ray of The Last Jedi we're getting in the spring. And Ryan Johnson shared some pretty crazy ideas he had for Ray's parents. I've got a bad feeling about this. It's time for Tatooine Sons. The force is strong in my family. I am your father. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Welcome, Star Wars fans. This is Tatooine Sons, your weekly look into all things Star Wars. From the unique perspective of a father sharing his love for the amazing space fantasy saga with his two sons. I am BB Nate, and I'm joined first by my brother, Samuel the Hutt. Uh, true to Star Wars fans, uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you're not a Star Wars fan, uh, you're missing out on some good reading material. Ooh. Yeah. He went, he went, he went reading on me, okay? <laughs> and of course, you can have Star Wars without bizarre father figures. So on that note, here's my dad, the Bowtie Jedi guy. What's up, dudes? <laughs> <laughs> you hip nut. I am. I'm a hip cat. It's... it's <laughs> It's Jazz Fridays. We're recording early now because of scheduling craziness in our lives. And so it's yeah. the evening of Friday, and this will be up Saturday morning. So it's not too early, right. but not live. And I, it's Friday is my jazz day, so I guess I'm a hip cat. I listen to jazz all when I'm in my car and stuff on Fridays. Why Fair Fridays? Enough. Why Fridays? Why not it's Fridays? Friday. Why not Friday? Exactly. It's, you know, <laughs> Friday is for jazz. Saturday is for jazz. Sunday. Sunday is for jazz. Anyway. Monday? Monday. Well, maybe. Mondays are for like just like sad to get... songs. Yeah. Blues. <laughs> the blues. <laughs> right. right. All right. Uh, so, um, Nathan, you're not feeling so good tonight. No. That's all right. He's going to muscle through this. He's doing a great job already. We're ready to go. He's got a cold. So yeah, That's why he sounds annoying. Just kidding. Yeah. No, he, you think he's, he's annoying all the time because that's That's what true. That's my job. Is, he's not annoying. He's an awesome kid. So, all right, well, let's get started. First, before we get too far into this, I want to say, thank our latest Patreon supporter, uh, Peter Ross. Peter Ross found us on Twitter and has been listening to our podcast for the last few weeks and making lots of comments about it. And he decided this week to join us and be um, a supporter. So we are, we are, we're in the, 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 the closing turn of our goal for January. We're at about $14 a month pledged and we want to get 11 more dollars. So when we do that, we're going to have a special show every week where you get to watch us or hear us uh, discuss the ideas for our new episode and we'll each talk about some things like that. We're also doing some uh, great exclusives. We did a, a couple things last week. We did a reaction video yep. of us watching Star Wars Rebels mid-season trailer and then what looked we, we thought was going to be about a 25 minute or 20, 25 minute podcast took, to, took out, uh, decided to be a 45 minute <laughs> podcast as we broke down the trailer. Um, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was fun. A lot of Mortis talk. But yeah. On that one, Nathan, you like the Mortis arc. Is that your favorite arc from Clone Wars? Yes. Why? Why is that? It's just weird. It's just weird. <laughs> weird is the right way to describe yeah. the Mortis arc. Well, that's about right. So awesome. All right. Um, so yeah, thank you, uh, Peter, for being our Patreon supporter. You are awesome, and we really, really appreciate it. And then I wanted to read a new review. Well, it's not a new review. We didn't get any new reviews on on iTunes this week. Dang. What do you guys think about that? People just don't like us. I guess. Slacker. Slackers. <laughs> um, just kidding. Don't get mad at us. <laughs> well. I want to go home and rethink my life. Yeah. I feel that way sometimes. Uh, we didn't get any reviews this week. And we were up to... I don't know how many reviews are we at to. We're up to 13 ratings and 7 customer reviews. We have... Um, somebody gave us a one star. Boo. Boo. I don't know why they gave us a one star. It doesn't say why. It doesn't. They didn't actually review it. They just gave us a rating of one star. Wimp. Haters gonna hate. Yeah. You know, uh, that's okay. It'll keep us humble. So, um, yeah. Anyway, 
Um, but we did get a good review a couple weeks ago from Zen Kenobi. You hear what he did there? Did you kind of get that? <laughs> That's funny. What you, uh, Clever. I, I like thought it. it was good. Oh, it is Zen good. Kenobi. It is good. Yeah. Uh, here's what the title I mean, it's five stars so that's good yeah helps offset the one star by that one person whoever you are if you're listening to this podcast and you gave us one star you, why uh, are you still listening to the podcast then right that's true I did have to block somebody on Twitter last Boo. night what did they do they were just being really ugly about The Last Jedi you know saying some really ugly things and which is saying, I mean it's fine to have your own opinion we don't mind that but just being a jerk about it isn't the right way to do it. Right. And he was saying like hateful things about us, hateful things about Ryan Johnson and stuff like that. And I'd been putting up for it for about a week. So we just decided, you know, there's a solution there's for a this. Point. Yeah. The solution was block him. And so we did. So anyway, I don't know if that was him that gave us the one star. It might have been. Uh, but Zen Kenobi, you didn't give us one star. You yeah. gave us five stars. And the title of your review was Family Star Wars Podcast That Is Fun For Everyone. That's kind of a good start, don't you yeah, think? that's, that's mm-hmm. about right. It says, I was looking for a Star Wars podcast. I can play in the car, car when I'm with my kids. All right, we're, we're on the good track here. Yeah. Tatooine Sons fits the bill and is for everyone listening. It's fun for everyone listening. I also have two sons who are on this Star Wars journey with me. So Zen Kenobi and your two sons, I'm hoping you're listening to this today. We salute you. Good job. <laughs> there we go. All right. So that's uh, what's going on there. Uh, where's my phone? I had my phone. I need my phone for my poll results. Uh-oh. Right. It's right behind you. It's, I just can't. I can't reach it. All right. So let's go over here. Get ready to talk about the poll results. All right, so our poll this week, I'm pulling it up right now, was pretty simple. It was about the Solo trailer. Oh, yeah. So I just saw a tweet just a few minutes before we started recording where there's like this big conspiracy theory now that there isn't going to be a Solo trailer. There's that not the big be a Solo marketing, movie? No, there's a Solo movie. Oh, the big okay. marketing idea is to just have everybody spend the next four months talking about the fact that there's not been a solo trailer. It's like there's so, no such thing as bad publicity. And so everybody's talking about the story, or the movie, regardless. So uh, Yeah, no, that's stupid. <laughs> our internet's on crack. What's new? <laughs> I got home, and they were uh, working on the internet, so now I'm going to reconnect to it and see if that fixes anything. So, uh, yes. Sorry about this, guys. Um, this fun. Uh, some, why don't you guys talk amongst yourselves real quick? Why don't you have a quick conversation, Sam, with, about whatever you want to talk about? With BBD. What do you want to see in the solo trailer, Nate? What's the one thing you want to see in the solo trailer, Nate? A solo trailer? Just, uh, just a anything. solo trailer? Fair why enough. We just have a trailer in general. Uh, okay. The okay. poll was, wait, or, um, Never mind. when are we going to get a solo trailer? Yeah. I just I don't know what our results were. I don't either, because there they go. All right. Yay. What do you think? When will the trailer for Solo, A Star Wars Story be released? And this was put out a week ago. And 35% of you voted on within a week. Guess what? You was wrong. I was wrong, too. I really thought it was going to yeah, come this week. same. So, uh, still, the most of you, though, voted 46%. Voted still two to three weeks away, so it could still happen for you. Yeah. But you know, the big rumor right now, guys, is Super Bowl. How far away is that? A week from Sunday, Oof. February 4th. I don't think Star Wars has ever premiered a trailer this late during the Super Bowl. Oh, during the Super Bowl. No, I can't recall any time. So, what would you would you watch the Super Bowl if you knew the solo story that was going to be on it? BB Nate, mm. maybe. <laughs> Why wouldn't you, you know, it's the the Eagles versus the Patriots. What would be reasons you wouldn't watch the Super Bowl this year? I just don't like the Super Bowl. Who doesn't have the football time, the football team I like. Which is? Broncos. It does have the team you hate. Uh-huh. Patriots. The Patriots. We hate the Why Patriots in this family. It? We're probably just going to lose a bunch of, we're going to get a, uh, many more one star reviews now. No, I think that the whole nation hates the Patriots. Here's what they'll do. Retweet or, or share this podcast, like us, comment on it, whatever, review us. If you hate the Patriots, you can give us a one star. No, wait, I said that wrong. If you if if you hate the Patriots, give us a five star. If you love the Patriots, give us a one star. I bet you that we would have a ton of five stars and no one stars because 
only people that love the Patriots live in New England, and they're not listening. Cause right. Uh, you said the people that hate the Patriots I know, I fixed get it. five stars. No, I, yeah, if they hate the Patriots, they give us five stars. That makes sense. Yeah, it oh. does. <laughs> He's slightly medicated, folks. Um, all right. <laughs> and then Yeah, and then 19% said, what solo movie? So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's the uh, poll for this week. We're going to go into the first topic. Are you ready for this, BB Nate? Sure. Uh-oh. Yeah. All right, here we go. First topic is going to be Ryan Johnson teases new material in The Last Jedi novelization. In The Last Jedi novelization, uh, Ryan Johnson said that there will probably be a Han Solo funeral, um, Rose and Paige together, and more Canto Bite. So that's a good amount of stuff to put in a book. And yeah. that's just the tip of it, the iceberg. He said, "Oh, I'm sure there's more. a lot of stuff in there that he's teasing, that yeah. he is holding back." He said, "That's just the beginning, so, so we'll get more." Dad, since your favorite character is Han Solo, what do you think about his funeral? <laughs> um, I was a little, um, I'm I'm a little confused on the timeline, to be honest with you, because we get the impression yeah. from the Last Jedi. Um, that it could be just a couple of days, few days potentially, between Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. We don't know. They've not told us how long that is. But I don't think there's enough time to do a funeral. No. Maybe it's at the end of the book. Maybe it's after The Last Jedi. No, that would be interesting. I, I was a little disappointed we didn't see that in The Last Jedi. Um, Honestly, so I'm glad to hear it's it in the never book. crossed my mind, but now that it's brought up, I'm kind of like, why didn't we see it? So. Yeah. Um, it's definitely not going to have... Um, Han Solo's body. Well, yeah. Because that was on Starkiller Base floating down there. And so I don't think that we have any hope of that. So I think it's more of a memorial service. Yeah. They probably gathered on the on the planet that they started the movie on, on The Last Jedi, and met together and talked Just... about... Um, you know, at the end of The Force Awakens, C-3PO has a gold arm again. You remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember in the, earlier in that, he's got the red arm, and then when they get ready to leave, when Ray and Chewie get ready to leave on the Falcon with um, R2-D2, he's got a gold arm now. Yeah. So, time may have passed there that we haven't prepared for. I That's can't true. imagine that they've had, that they're going to have a memorial for Han Solo. Without Chewbacca. Well, yeah. There, so... So it either have to be, like, at the very beginning of the book, or at the very end. You gotta have Chewbacca at it. Oh, absolutely. Okay. What about the other things, Nathan? Now, Nathan, you're um, reading Cobalt Squadron right now, which is a, a lot of interaction between Paige and Rose, and you've enjoyed that a great deal. What do you think about the idea of having more of that in the Force of, or the Last Jedi novelization? And how? And I guess that would have to be at the very beginning as well. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, it that's interesting because it's kind of they've already had enough interaction in the Cobalt Squad book, but with them having more, I don't see how they could fit that in. Yeah, because the movie starts. Paige is dead. Pretty much. I mean, she dies in the opening scene of the movie. So they must, you know, I, I have a feeling that the Han Solo sequence, the Paige Rose sequence, all of that is early in the book before we get to Poe and his holding for general hugs moment. So what's the other thing? Oh, Canto Bite. What do you think about that, uh, Samuel the Hutt? What do you think about Canto Bite being in this? Uh, that's nice. I like it. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to see more in the movie, but... Because there's just so much to see. Uh, it'll be nice to experience more of it. I mean, they obviously couldn't show much more in the movie. And that's why there's deleted scenes. Um, so it'll be nice to experience more of well, it. Well, this isn't I mean, a deleted scene. This is in the novelization. No, I know. So. I'm just saying that like they did delete stuff from Cantabite. And it'll be nice to see or read a bit more about it. And... Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I mean, I could have read... I mean, you could just read the Canto Bite book, but it'll be nice to see more of it in regards to The Last well, Jedi. Well, Canto Bite's been a controversial um, sequence of scenes from The Last Jedi. There's a lot of people that think it's completely pointless. We talked about that on our very first review uh, podcast yeah. about 
The Last Jedi and how we thought that Canto Bight is actually a critical sequence of scenes right. with it. But guys, you know, like on Collider Jedi Council, I was listening to it when I was driving back from uh, L.A. today. I was listening to their last episode, John Roca, who's a big guy with Collider. Um, he's talking about it. He's seen the movie four times. Slacker, by the way, John. Boo. Four times. That's it? He's not a real Star Wars fan. Anyway, um, you know, he's he said that after the first time he saw it, when Canto Bite comes on is when he gets up and he goes to the bathroom and he, you know, walks, stretches his legs and waits two or three minutes and then comes back in. He totally skips it. So I'm curious to see what they, if there's more information in the Canto Bite scene that actually develops that. Do you think we're going to see more Broom Boy BB Nate? No. You don't? Really? Not really. It's dependent on where they go with him. If they go on our theory, then yeah, we'll see more of Broom Boy. But otherwise, there's no need to see more of him. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Any more thoughts on the novelization? Okay. Now, I here's another thing about the novelization that I thought was interesting. We have talked a little bit about this. I know we talked about it on our Patreon only podcast last week when we were talking about Rebels, and I had mentioned at some point that the novelization was a really the novelizations of the prequels were like a big deal for me when the prequels came out and how they were so great um, in that. Um, and we know that. What is on film always trumps anything outside of film when it comes to canon. And so if there's like, for example, The Force Awakens, um, when Alan Dean Foster wrote that, who was interestingly enough, wrote the original trilogy novelizations um, with it. And here's a funny story about that. I don't know if you guys have never heard this, but I was thinking about this and I heard this today too. Um, Alan Dean Foster um, sort of volunteered, raised his hands at a panel. At a, at a Comic Con or something like that, or when they were talking huh. about The Force Awakens, he just like raised his hands and offered to write the novelization, like volunteered in the middle of the panel That's weird. to do it. But anyway, he wrote the original stuff. Um, he didn't have the finished script, he had an early script of The Force Awakens. Uh-huh. And so there's things in The Force Awakens novelization that contradict. An example is that Ray and Poe meet in the novelization of The Force Awakens. And we know in The Last Jedi, they've never met until the very end because it's on the Falcon when she says, I, hi, I'm Poe, and he, or hi, I'm Ray, and he goes, I know. Right. Um, but that's the first time that they've met. Um, so you know, it's always been an issue where the novelizations may not fully match up with the movie mm-hmm. because they're writing from an early version of a script. But... This book is not coming out immediately. I mean, I bought Force Awakens novelization the night after we saw the Force Awakens in the theater oh. the first time. You did? I did. I bought it on my Kindle <laughs> um, with that. And we can't get this one till March, I think it's 6th or 5th. March 5th or 6th. Anyway, it's a couple weeks away. Sixth. Uh, I think it's the 6th. Yeah, so we don't get this. For that. And Ryan Johnson has been completely... A part of the process of writing this novelization. So what do you think, BB Nate, about the fact that our writer and director for The Last Jedi is a part of the novelization? Um, Do you think that's going to mean that this is going to have a lot more canon to it? Do you think it's going to have a lot more um, true stories of like what he had originally wanted to see in the story? What do you think about that? I think it'll be more canon, really. Because if the director is working on it, then it should be canon. Has the director worked on any of the other? Movies? I don't think so. I've never heard of anything like this. No, I haven't heard. Of it. Yeah, this is because they made new. a big deal out of it in the Star Wars show. Yeah, they did on this on this last week episode of Star Wars show. Mm-hmm. They talked about that. And there's a featurette where he's talking about the fact that he's engaged with this. Um, so it sounds to me like there's a lot of canon there. Um, what do you think about the fact that Samuel Hutt about uh, Ryan Johnson being able to expand the story? Uh, in the novelization, do you think he's going to put a lot of maybe some of the questions that were left uh, a little ambiguous or, or unanswered or unclear from the Last Jedi? Or is he going to be able to, after hearing fan reaction, integrate those answers into this story and maybe calm some of the fanboys down? What do you think about that? Maybe. Um, I mean, the two burning questions we everyone still has is uh, more so who Snoke is, because uh, they never answer that, and then. Still sort of raise parents because that's still kind of up in the air. But we're going to talk about that because Ryan Johnson said some stuff about right. that. Right. So he, he may either just build on what Kylo said 
or he may just make it even more vague to confuse us. You know, I remember after the Snoke thing blew up after The Last Jedi and everybody was like, he didn't give backstory. He talked about, you know, in the movie itself, it's difficult to stop the the narrative of the movie in the throne room and have him give a 30 second explanation of his backstory. Right. But it works in the novel. Nathan, do you think we're going to get Snoke backstory at all? No. Okay. I don't know. No. It wouldn't make sense. Why is that? Because... I think he would let fans down more. And I don't think he wants that to be happening because he already has seen how they react to the movie. Right. Why would he let them down? Why do you think it'll let him down? Because everybody that's watching it, all the people who have watched the movie uh-huh. and they're, they were expecting it in the movie, they already spent $15 on a ticket. They don't want to go to the store and spend 15 more dollars. Well, that's a really good point, BB Nate. You that know, fans that see the movie that are upset about Snoke and not getting backstory don't get the answers in the movie and now they have to buy a book in order to get the answers. Yeah. That's a really good point, BB Nate. Yeah, that's, that is a good point. Okay. Well, I, uh, what, you know, did you, do you remember, you watched the featurette that was part of the Star Wars show, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Samuel had, did you, uh, I love the fact that he talked about getting on his bicycle as a kid yeah. and riding the store and getting novelizations of, bo- of, movies, of movies with it. Yeah. Uh, do you think that his love for the novels is why we're, they're doing it this way? I think so. I think he wants to give it a um, the proper feel. He wants it to, 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 to work because he knows how a good novelization of a movie should be because he, he's gotten them his whole life so he's like all right i want it to look like this i want it to go this way that way um it'd be a book that he'd want to go and get and read you know here's one thing that's absolutely sure um and that is the fact that george lucas didn't give a rip about the novelizations (laughs) and i know he wasn't engaged at all in the novelizations of the movies he's a movie maker uh, he's a storyteller when it comes to the, f- the filmmaking, and he didn't care about the novelizations at all. So there's no way that he would have sat around with Alan Dean Foster yeah, yeah. or any of the writers of the prequel novelizations and get them to, to uh, tell them what he would have liked the book to be about. So I think this is actually going to be a really interesting thing. I'm, I'm going to be transparent here. I had no intention of buying The Last Jedi novelization. Me either. Too far out from the original movie. Um, honestly, I... Have I owned, the, like I said, the Force Awakens novelization? I haven't gotten through it one time. I've started it like four or five times. It's a little boring compared to the prequel stuff huh. um, that I read. I'm excited to read The Last Jedi, though, because I know there's content in it that wasn't in this. So, good um, That's good. Okay. Um, we're going to get ready to move on to the next topic here. Um, we're going to be moving on to uh, The Last Jedi deleted scene. So, uh, part of the Star Wars show that we've talked about, there was a lot of content this week in the Star Wars show. Oh, yeah. Not to mention a really amazing pitch for their uh, Star Wars Day at Sea <laughs> yeah, on I'm the sold. Disney cruise. I know, I'm, I'm like ready to... Maybe if, I had to, if they're listening, they should like sponsor us we'll, and let us go. We, we could would. run the thing, I think. Don't you think, BB-8? Yeah. You'd go, wouldn't you? Yes, I would. <laughs> right, well, of course we'd go. Um, anyway, on there, they, they talked about the Last Jedi Blu-ray that's coming out sometime in the spring... There's a rumor it's like the last Tuesday of March, but we don't Why know so that. Why so specific? <laughs> March 27th. Well, it always comes out on Tuesdays. DVDs and Blu-rays come out on Tuesdays. Why? I don't know. I don't make the rules. But anyway, um, <laughs> which would be great, except for the fact that you guys are going to be on, on spring break and not here. Uh, so I'm just going to have to buy it and watch it myself because mom isn't going to watch it again. But anyway. <laughs> That's um, happened before. It happened last uh, with Force Awakens. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's happened because they go to spring break every year. Anyway. Just send us the uh, digital download code. Yeah, exactly. All right. So The Last Jedi Blu-ray is to be released this spring and it will include 20 minutes of deleted scenes. Wow. What do you think about that? I mean, that's not anything new. We've kind of been hearing that he had a lot of things that he cut from the movie on that. Yeah. But one of those scenes has to do with the third lesson um, um. of Ray, BB Nate. We had a podcast a few weeks ago where we decided we were going to go to the theater that day, watch it, and see if there was a third lesson. Did we find the third lesson in the movie? No. All right. So no. Do, no. <laughs> so if, if if we weren't we were talking about the third lesson being in the deleted scenes, why were 
Well, that's true. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate it. All right. He gets a little grumpy when he's sick. Um, Call me out here in front of everybody on the on the uh, show, but that's all right. So here's the description of it. it. Says I'm looking actually at Star Wars Underworld. Our friend Dominic Jones. You know Dominic. Yeah. Met Dominic at, at uh, Star Wars Celebration. Celebration. Hung out with him a little bit. Cool. Um, cool says. Dude. Absolutely, they're awesome guys over there. Although they're not big fans of the Last Jedi, from what I understand, really, they didn't like it. I remember I listened well, to their initial also, reaction show, and they were not happy. Also, they weren't—they're not huge fans of Ezra from Rebels. They're just not a huge fan of, of Rebels. Like they didn't like Tatooine Sons very much, or the Twin Sons. They didn't like Tatooine Sons. What? Everybody likes Tatooine. No, I think Sons. A lot, from what I remember, they were like they were kind of divided on uh, the Twin Sons episode. Really? Yeah, I think so. Like one of some of them were saying that they liked the whole short battle because it was like a samurai thing. They they went into detail on that. And Interesting. Then other times they, they they were like they wanted more. So. Okay. Anyway, Dominic Jones. Cool. I'm, I'm I got us off track here, but Dominic Jones talks about a scene featuring Luke tricking Ray into thinking the caretakers are in danger. And so what I understand is he sees these ships. They see these ships coming in from the coast, and Luke tells Ray. That those ships are bringing in forces that, uh, like pirates, that attack the caretakers. And it's her responsibility to do something about it. Or what is she going to do about it or something like that. And she gets upset. And that's when we see, and remember the behind the scenes uh, featurette, where she's running with the lightsaber on Noctu. And all this other stuff. That's that scene. She's running to the shore to go save the caretakers. Those like weird nun. Fish nuns? Yeah. Penguin fish fish nuns. nuns. Fish nuns. They were weird. But anyway, <laughs> uh, they go to the caretakers and try to stop the pirates from the caretakers. And when she gets to the shore, there's like these sailors there with the caretakers and they're having a party and they're dancing. And this is something that goes on all the time. And she gets really upset with Luke over this. Well, yeah. And it's part of the third lesson. Um, and from what I understand, the third lesson is, um, you, you know... Don't think, just take action. Was basically uh, that. Regardless of what's going on. Right. So she knew what was the right thing to do and she did it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong as to what I've heard we'll on that. But that's where she says this line in the actual um, deleted scene, right. which we've seen on the, the Star Wars show. What was exactly... Do, you, do either of you it guys... Was, it was like the version of Luke Skywalker that you hate, I believed in. Or wow. something like the that. The legend Some, of Luke Skywalker that you hate, I believed in that. Yeah, something like that. Wow, that's a pretty... There's so much to do with this idea of the legend of Luke versus who Luke really was. Right. Um, the whole that. Legends of Luke Skywalker book that we've both read, which is pretty good. <laughs> Nathan made a cool face. You know, he's, he's, he's trying to be in this podcast as much as he can, but it's his face that did it, not his uh, voice on that. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about the uh, deleted scenes idea and 20 minutes of it? Do you want them to be separate or do you want them to integrate them into the movie? Make like... I know they're not going to call it a director's cut because... Ryan Johnson's already said that, but what if they made like an extended special version, a <laughs> uh, special uh, <laughs> extended version that had those scenes actually cut into the movie? What would be your thoughts on that, BB Nate? I, I would like that to see where they were actually taking place. <laughs> and have them fully edited in, soundtracked and everything. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Be, make it like a three hour movie. What do you think about that, Sam, Samuel the Hutt? Hey, the more Star Wars, the better. I'm all up for a three hour version of The Last Jedi. <laughs> All right. Make this happen, Ryan. We know you're watching this. He doesn't watch. He may listen. Listen, whatever. You know what I mean. Same thing. Cool. All right. So let's move to the last topic of the day, which is Ryan Johnson's rejected ideas for Ray's parentage. Yeah. So Ryan Johnson was saying, uh, and I'm paraphrasing here, that he had an entire document on his um, computer just full chock full of Ray's idea of uh, parents uh, parentage or whatever um, like because they were saying that with all that pressure to make a good movie uh, he needed to figure out who Ray's parents were so he wrote down every single idea he could come up with the good the bad the ugly and um, a couple of them one of them he said that she was um, perhaps a clone wasn't that one of them? That's an idea that I could... Yeah, you came up with the one for, like, Luke. Like, you were... Like, like a female, it. young, female version clone like, of Luke Skywalker. You were, I feel like it's You a were, like, idea. really there was like, banking on it. Like, 30 seconds, I was really into it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, and then another one, another crazy one was that she was a robot. She was just a giant droid. Because uh, he's like, I mean, think about it. I mean, you got Luke's uh, robotic hand with uh, the synth skin or whatever, the synth flesh. Why can't they just make a whole robot? I immediately read that and thought, how is that going to work? How does she use the Force? But whatever. <laughs> you get the idea. Ooh. I didn't even think about the Force on that. But I still think that she's Luke Skywalker's clone. Okay. I've, I'm back on that one again. What do you think about my idea? <laughs> no. I, I think Ryan Johnson agrees with me on this, and we're going to find that out in the last shot of novelization. BB Nate, what do you think about some of the, the robot or clone ideas when it comes to Ray's parentage? I think you should just leave it how everybody thinks of it in The Last Jedi. Hmm. Which is what? That they were nobody. Kind Maybe of. they technically were nobody because there was no one. She was a clone. I, did I come up with this after The Last Jedi or before The Last before, Jedi? Before. Way before. Like, we were, we were doing But it that. works with your parents or nobody. Yeah, but they said they were filthy drunk traders. No, no. Maybe no, they no, were no. adopted no, parents. Here's, here's the reality. Ray says they were nobody. Ah. Kylo says they were filthy junk traders that sold you for drinking, uh, junkers sold you for drinking, drinking money and died in a pauper's grave, pauper's grave, grave or whatever. Dancer. Yeah, whatever ah, that man, was. And everybody's right. saying Kylo's lying to her. Maybe he is. Maybe he's just grabbing a hold uh. of the idea that. That, that, that they were nobody from his perspective, but Ray, I don't know. Because I'm telling you, when she's touching that that shattered glass moment in there the Force Cave, her. it was just her and there were hundreds of them. What screams clone more than that? Don't you think it's going to get a little bit too complicated once you go down this route? Because you can start cloning Jedi's. Or four cents. Apparently, you've never read the extended universe legends well, books. <laughs> it's not canon, so why would I care? But they're, as Thrawn said, there's always a little truth in legends. <sighs> there we go. I just resolved it. You've heard it here. Ray is Luke Skywalker's clone. <laughs> Ryan Johnson says it. I'm reading it right here. Oh, yeah. He doesn't. Let's see. Where is that? I got to find it. I honestly listed everything I could think of, even possible, awful possibilities, where I said, oh, crud. Even awful. This is a quote from Ryan Maybe Johnson. he's throwing us off the It could be. Uh, even or awful not. possibilities where I said, this is not where we're go- what we're going to do. Ah, I mean, the less silly one was, is she a clone? Okay. Oh, yeah, boy. <laughs> this is insane. Your Ray Theory sucks shirts. There we go, Steel Wars. You can uh, take that. We should make one quick. We should make one and put it on our site so we have our own little thing. No, I'm just kidding. That's kind of mean. Anyway, any other ideas as far as who Ray's parents? You, Nate, BB Nate, you're convinced she really is nobody. And there, I mean, as far as her parents were just <clears throat> as is, right? As we thought from the end of The Last Jedi. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sam, any ideas and theories on Ray's parents? I I don't know. It's up in the air. They could go anywhere at this point. It's kind of like Brian Johnson said to JJ, Hey, have fun. <laughs> he really did. Which was the exact opposite of what JJ did with Ryan. Because yeah. JJ basically said, Hey, Ryan, here's everything that everybody's going to think about for the next two years. And you get to do what you want with this movie. And he's like, forget all y'all. I'm going to make everything go wrong. Uh, Raylo... <laughs> Luke, uh, Snoke, uh, all of it's going to be completely the opposite of what you think. But yep. here's one thing to think about when you think about Ray's parents. We see in the Force Vision when she's dropped off with Unkar. Unkar. Plut. There's a pretty nice ship floating away. Really nice. Uh, in, in Legends, I saw this one. Haha, ha, Legends. Um, <laughs> it's actually Luke Skywalker's shuttle. Well, Legends. here's what I think. I think that there's more to Ray's story. Than we've been led to believe. But I hope. we'll have to decide in like two years <laughs> when the next movie comes out. Anything else you guys want to talk about with that? Um, no. Nathan, you've got a lot of words tonight. Nope. Yep. Nope. Yep. All right. You'll be back next week. All right. No, I can't think of anything. It's a All short episode. Right. Well, it's still over 30 minutes. Hey. But, anything else? Anything else you wanted to talk about today? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. <laughs> I was something I was going to talk about, and then I forgot about it. It's okay. 
Ah, oh, stink. We know you're no. going skiing. Now. Well, here's one thing I will mention. Uh, you know, all of you Patreon people out there, thank you guys so much uh, for supporting us. If you want to support this podcast, go to patreon.com backslash Tatooine. You guys know how to spell that because you're Star Wars fans. Tatooine Sons. Let me clarify. S O N S. See, you see, see what we it? did there? Yeah, that's the cleverness of it. Everyone, everyone, I tell you know it's S O N S, not S U N S, and they're like, Oh, oh like, I guess. Two, and they love it every time. Exactly. S O N S. Why? It's because clever. I'm sitting here with the amazing two Tatooine Sons um, as we live in the desert of California. Um, right here. Anyway, um, and then the poster contest. We need to see. Here's what we need. And you guys can help us with this. Starting to, when this podcast goes live tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, within a 48-hour period, if we have 100 plays of this podcast, we can be certain we've got 50 subscribers to the podcast because some of you guys just play it when you see it on Twitter and things like that. So when we get to 100 plays in a 48-hour period, we can be certain we have 50 subscribers and we will do the contest um, the next week on the show. We will take the drawing for the Leia Star Wars Celebration exclusive poster uh, that we received at Star Wars Celebration. Yeah, buddy. All right. All right. Then let's talk about next week's poll or this current. I guess it's that, that's what that means. It's this week's poll. <laughs> All right, which are you more excited about? The additional content that will be included in the last Jedi novelization or the deleted scenes that will be included in the Blu-ray of the last Ooh. Jedi? Which will you be more excited about? Nate, what would, which would you be more excited about? Deleted scenes or additional content in a book? Deleted scenes. Deleted scenes. Okay, what about you, book. Samuel? Really? I know it's canon. Yeah. Or it's much more likely to be canned, I should say. Because we're, that's a good point. Ryan Johnson spending time putting the book together it makes tends sense to add that. Should... But if they do make an extended version, then those canon. said deli- those Ooh, that, scenes would be. Another good point, BB Nate. You've had a couple of them. You haven't he said hasn't much. talked much. He's yeah. been a man of few words, but the few words that he said have been very important words this evening. Sure. Um, with that, um, if it becomes part of a full extended cut version, then it pretty much becomes canon. If it remains as a deleted scene, then the book book becomes more canon. Mm. It'll be interesting. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for listening into this. Um, You know, this is uh, just a fun thing we get to do every single week, hang out together. Literally, it's almost like we just turned on a a microphone while we sit around the table eating dinner or talking Star Wars. Because we talk about Star Wars all the time but that doesn't yeah according to your mom we talk about (laughs) it way too much um but again doesn't really mean just because we're talking about something that we know what we're talking about right are you brainless i never ask that question until after i've done it we're smarter than this the ability to speak does not make you intelligent